years ago, I had to grow up because I found out I was having a baby. And so I was like, right, what do you do when you're growing up? Right, I had to get life insurance. That's a grown-up thing you do, you get life insurance. <laughs> Think about the future. But I looked into it, right, and you get so much money. It's fucking nuts. You can get literally like quarter of a million pounds. So I was like, if I was to die, like, that would be the worst day of my husband's life. Like, undoubtedly, like, the love of his life, the mother of his child had just died. Then he wouldn't be able to help it, right? He'd have one moment where he'd just be like, woo! <laughs> I won the fucking lottery! <laughs> and I said, for that reason, I didn't get it. Because <laughs> I would rather my newborn baby went without than my husband had that joy. Uh, that is, <laughs> I feel about that. Yeah, having a baby was a big decision, right? Very big decision. Not the biggest decision I'll ever make. That's whether I'll get a fringe or not. Uh, that's more a long-term kind of thing. I think people make it quite stressful, the thought of having children. People really play it down. Like Michelle Obama said this year that she hated Barack for the first 10 years of her marriage. And um, Barack Obama, um, it's her husband. Um, and uh, I, I, like, I don't know. Like, she said she said it because she wanted to give regular people hope. But I don't think she realised that that actually took away all hope. Because we're not married to Barack Obama. <laughs> Right, because if my husband's busy, it's because he's having a nap. If Barack was busy, he was like in the octagon or whatever, you know? It's a different thing, it's different. So people have asked me when I knew that I wanted to have a baby, and the truth is, it was the night that my cat died. Uh, traditional. Uh, because I love that cat so much, right? I love that cat more than certain family members. Like, maybe not my husband, but like my uncle. You know? <laughs> when I cried, that cat licked tears from my face. My uncle has never done that. <laughs> if he did, it'd be weird. I'd be like, get off, uncle, what are you doing? Uh, anyway, so I got back from the vet and I was so sad about my dead cat and I couldn't stop crying. It was this magical evening, it had just started snowing. And I looked down at my phone, I'd been tracking my periods, and I knew that I could get pregnant that night. And then the soul of my cat could get reincarnated into my baby. <laughs> What? And I told my husband that, and he refused to have sex with me. <laughs> but I had a baby, didn't I? <laughs> OK. And so I knew that I wanted to have a baby, but I knew that I didn't want a boy. Um, you're not going to say that, right? You're meant to say, I don't care about the gender as long as it's healthy. But the truth is, I would have rather a girl with a limp. <laughs> I know that gender is a construct, right? I just didn't want that toxic male energy. I happily would have taken a little femme boy with hay fever. And uh, <laughs> I would have loved that little sneezy boy. <laughs> Has anyone here been pregnant recently? Give me a cheer. Had a baby recently. Woo. Did you like being pregnant? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, no, no, good for you. So happy for you. Fucking hell. Uh, I, don't know. I just found it was a load of things you can't do, right? Like, you can't drink, you can't go on roller coasters, you can't do drugs. Uh, in moderation. <laughs> NHS advice, trust yourself, you know your body. Uh, no, I shouldn't do them anyway, I get a rash. Um, I <laughs> experimented a little bit in my 20s and I'd always like, react really strangely. I once got home from this party and I was like really wired and I couldn't sleep. And I was like, I know, I'd go and chat with the guy at the local shop because I was friends with him, lucky him. Uh, <laughs> I got there and I was like, we get on really well. We've had this mad idea, right? If we're not both married by the time that we're 40, we should marry each other. And he was like, I'm 62 and this is my wife. <laughs> okay. Okay. Interesting. I found out the advice when I was pregnant so patronising. Right? I read this book and they were like, look, you have to eat really healthily and think of a baby all the time. If you do accidentally eat half a pizza, go to bed, wake up the next day, and it's a new day. And I was like, half a pizza? <laughs> I've never seen half a pizza in my life. The only time I've ever eaten half a pizza is when I've eaten my own pizza and then said to my husband, are you going to finish that? <laughs> and, pizza as well. Thank you. and I was so worried about my body changing. And I think all the celebs make it so difficult because they're like, I had to work so hard to get my pre-pregnancy body back. I had to work so hard, I didn't even recognise myself after I had a baby. But what I realised, right, is that my body didn't really change. Um, the key is to have a bit of a garbage body beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a double chin and wobbly tummy since I was 13. Um, I'm back, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same old me. Okay. <laughs> So worried because they say when you have a baby, like you can just go around, live your life, just piss yourself out of nowhere. And I was so nervous, I was worried. And I opened up to a friend of mine, and 
she was like, Harriet, I've been on nights out with you. You've pissed yourself loads. Um, you <laughs> don't need to worry about that at all. And then I was worried because they say, when you have a baby, your vagina and your arsehole can become one. <laughs> but, like, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm a busy lady, <laughs> you know? I don't have time for a vagina and an arsehole. I've got things to do. I've got a baby to raise. <laughs> yeah, your vagina and your arsehole become one. It's like some kind of fucked up Spice Girls song, isn't it? Horrible. 